welcome to Two Guys Garage. Now, this is the kind of episode I like. We're gonna get gritty, a little greasy. We're gonna do some good, down and dirty maintenance. It's always good to have a good car friend, and you know, we've got a buddy that has a 90,000 mile car, doesn't wanna buy a new one. So we're gonna go through, make sure the brakes are correct, all the fluids are cool, make sure the headlights are looking good. A lot of good maintenance tips, so stay tuned. High enough for you there, old man? Ah, we're perfect. Now, the only reason why this thing came in, because our car buddy's not really a maintenance freak. It's got a little brake shutter. Now, it'll drive you crazy. You start to get on that pedal, that front end, that steering wheel starts shaking on you, but it's also really unsafe. So we're gonna take a look. Now, typical cause is your rotors are warped. Now, I see he's got a little bit of towing action going on. I know he's an aggressive driver. We probably overheated these rotors, got them warped, and now that pad's trying to hang on there as that rotor's going round and round. Now, the first thing I notice, the pad's got some life in it, but it's probably been overheated. You know, we've saturated this rotor. Time to replace it. Like like heat, a lot of times, will warp it, give you that kind of mm -hmm shake. Yeah, there's a lot of casting, residual stress in here. You get the temperature hot enough, that metal can start to move around. So, we know we're gonna go ahead and replace the rotors. Now, while we're there, there's no sense on putting an old pad on, so we're gonna do the pads as well. Now, it did have a soft pedal, too, so we can kind of check all of our rubber lines, see if anything's swelling, sort of internal bursting. That'll create a soft pedal. A lot of times, it'll make the vehicle turn one way or the other. Now, if all that checks out good, you know, we're still going to go ahead and do a bleed. That'll make sure there's no air in the lines, make sure you got the best pedal possible. All right. Now, once you got some pad wear, that piston's extended out of that caliper. You're never gonna get a new pad with full thickness back in there. So you're gonna have to push that piston back in. I generally like to do it while it's still assembled. Everything's dirty anyway. Now, if you're gonna replace the pads, you can slide a little screwdriver and be careful. You're gonna slide it in and find a good spot and just kind of slowly wedge that pad and that piston back in there. And I like to go ahead and break open the bleed screw and let that old fluid just kind of run out into a catch pan. Get it out of there, but make sure, you know, by the time your piston's stopped, you got the thing locked off. So that gets everything compressed. Now you can start pulling off, you know, your caliper, the pads will drop right out and pull your rotor off and get busy. Now, a lot of times these bleed screws will get corroded in there. They're pretty small and fragile and they'll get rounded off. So a cool trick is this grip tight super socket. Now this has these basically little like cam lock features in it. So as you start to turn it, these little guys will grip the flat spots of that, you know, screw or bleeder and actually, you know, grip it enough to break it loose, you know, even if the corners have been rounded off. So if you get an old one of those guys, you know, one of these little grip tight super sockets give you a nice locking way to break it free again. So I got a couple little bolts here. I'll pull the caliper off. It's always good to get yourself a coat hanger or a wire you know, and hang the caliper off it so you don't put any tension, maybe burst to, you know, tear the inside of this line. And from there, it's pretty simple. Pull a couple of brackets and the rotor comes off. We're ready to put it back together after a little bit of cleanup. So let me get busy on that. Yeah, now that's typical. This rotor doesn't have enough meat on it to turn it and get it machined and get it true again. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to chuck it and put a new one on it. Now it measures decently, sort of uniform, you know, around the radius here, but you know, it's got that warpage issue and that's what's giving us that shutter when we go to break. And I'm gonna get up here and check out the copper levels on the brake fluid. Uh, contrary to popular belief, you can't check it by tasting it. You can't check it by looking at it. You gotta actually do a test. And from Phoenix Systems, we've got this brake check, this brake strip, and what we're looking for is copper. I'm gonna come down here and show you the chart. So you put it down, this works within a minute, so it's really easy, and all you do is read the chart. The copper is actually inside of the steel lines. It's slowly corroding and wanting to work out into your brake system. Yeah, now that copper is there on purpose. The OEMs put it in there but it's the corrosiveness of the fluid and the breakdown, it starts to get that copper you know, in, in the fluid itself and the system will let you test that level and tell you how good the fluid is and whether you need to change it or not. Now these are the same kit. This is one if you just do a few changes, you know, if you want to test a few. This is a kit for a pro, so this comes with 100. Now judging by the chart, if we were to get to, let's say 200, you want to definitely flush the system and start over. 
we're somewhere about 100, so we're looking at where you want to check every oil change, every maintenance uh, frequency. Yeah, so and today, you know, we're, we're, we're doing okay. We can kind of monitor from here on out. We don't have to flush everything. We can go ahead and do our brake job. We can put the bleeder on it, make sure we don't have no air in the system, get a nice firm pedal, and we can get on the road in no time. Yep, so speaking of which, right now we're gonna take a break. We come back, we're gonna show you how to bleed your brakes. Stay tuned. My car has several small dents in it, but some are in the steel door panel and some are on the fiberglass quarter panel. Is there one product that I can use to repair both surfaces? If you have some simple automotive skill, you can easily fill, sand, and repair small dents. A product like 3M Bondo Professional Gold is designed to work on fiberglass, steel, wood, and e-coat surfaces. It's made from state-of-the-art polyester resins for superior adhesion and finished results. This tip is brought to you by 3M Car Care, performance-driven solutions. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Satisfied Brake Products, North America's leading independent manufacturer of friction technologies. Look to Satisfied for all of your stopping needs. All right. Hey, welcome back. We've got everything put back together on our brake system. We've got our new rotors. We've got our new pads. Now, the next thing to do is bleed the system. Now, there's a couple ways, you know, we're all familiar with. You can do a gravity bleed if you're just, you know, putting on a whole lot of new hardware like calipers and wheel cylinders. Gravity bleed, just filling the cylinder up, the master cylinder, letting gravity kind of start to push fluid down, but that won't get your air out. And we all know the 10 time push, you know, you sit there for a half an hour and try to get all the fluid to shove down the air bubbles out. You know, that works pretty good too. And you can do a vacuum. So you can pull a vacuum down here on the caliper, pull the fluid down. But every one of those methods is trying to make the air go the wrong direction. Now we all know bubbles float up. So if you're up here at the master cylinder, you know, pushing fluid down, you may get the bubble to go down a little bit between pumps and then starts to rise back up again. So the best way to do it is a reverse bleeder. Now there's a really great bleeder from Phoenix Systems. Now, not only does it look like a ray gun, which is really cool, but it's got a lot of neat features too. I've got the, you know, adapter for the flashlight so I can get into those dark, you know, creepy places. And I've got all the adapters to do any type of bleeding you know, whether it's a bench bleed for a master cylinder up on the vise, you know, or if I want to do a vacuum bleed. This one can do it all, but it's best known for the reverse bleed because it gets you such a nice firm pedal and pushes all those air bubbles the way you want them to go. So, I'm going to attach this guy to a nice convenient spot with my magnet. I've got all the air bled out of here by squeezing it. Now all i got to do, basically pop it on. Let me grab my wrench. Break my bleeder open. And I'll squeeze the handle just a little bit to make sure I've got no air in there. Now I can put a few pumps in here and start to watch my fluid go up. And that's going to force all my air bubbles to the top. So before you know it, I'm going to have the firmest pedal available. We'll be ready to roll down the road again. Cool, dude. It's a nice, uh, nice tool. Yeah, no, it's real handy. And if you may have noticed, those regular viewers see this big wall over here. Notice some difference? Check out this video. All right, we got a special segment today. We've got a good friend of mine, Totem, who is a uh, graffiti artist out of Atlanta. And we've got a wall here that really uh, is pretty bad. It's been eight years since it's been changed. Yeah. And it's time. I think it is. I think I'm gonna work the magic on this uh, big gray wall for you. Now, what's gonna happen is Totem's gonna go on this thing, lay out, we don't even know what it is yet. So we're kind of trying to figure that out, but it's gonna turn into something way cool. What do you like to paint? Uh, most of the time I paint robotic madness, explosions, and all kinds of crazy stuff having to do with hot rods and dragsters, all of the above, just to make it cool. You've done so many murals, so many different styles, and uh, really what we ought to do is go ahead and put that on our site and people can check it out. And you see behind us, we've got a few colors. Yeah, <laughs> more than enough. We've got plenty of sparkles, gray, black, anything you could want in our stash. So it's your deal, man, whatever you want to do. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna do my best then. Kiss it goodbye.
Hey, welcome to Ask the Host. We've got a good one today. This is from Frank T. I had new brake pads put on my 04 Ford Sport Track. Now I'm having a lot of brake dusting. What's the problem? I didn't have this before. Well, you probably switched compounds. Most of the OEMs, at least in the domestics, are trying to use more ceramic base. The ceramic base are great. It's a great combination of good friction, uh, good sound quality, so not the squealing and chatter. Uh, they also don't dust as much, or at least when they do dust, it's a lighter gray versus a darker. I'm assuming maybe you went with a semi-metallic. It's a good pad. They tend to have a little bit more squeal and a lot more you know, blackening or dusting on the wheels. So try upgrading maybe to a ceramic next time. I think you'll be happy. Keep writing in and we'll keep answering your questions. Welcome back. All right, you may wonder why we're crawling around inside the car. Well, we're gonna do a little bit of cleaning on the inside of this baby because got a little bit of a funky moldy smell in this place and you know. I think here's one culprit. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that. God. All right, now if you look inside, we pulled this filter out from underneath the dash. This is the filter that takes all the air from the outside and pushes it through. And if you can smell it, you can breathe it, so they say, and look inside of there. Yeah, that's yeah, not very good. Yeah, especially when you get down in there and there's like a thick caking going on. Dog hair. Probably could, you know, do a crazy thing like vacuum this sucker too while we're here. Well, we can go ahead and replace the filter. That'll get a lot of the, uh, you know, airborne dust particles, you know, leaves and dog hair. But, you know, any of the underlying mildew, bacteria, you know, any viruses that are clinging around, a lot of those allergens that hang around in your car, we're going to show you some tips on how to get rid of those. Now you know, nothing says I love you like getting rid of the mold and the bacteria and the gunk that's inside your significant other's car. We all know that. So what we've got is from RunRight, and it's FAQ, Fresh Air Quality. It's a really easy product to use. It comes with this atomizer, and all you do is shake up, shake her up. If you got a little funnel like we do, pour it in. Goes really fast and easy. See, piece of cake. Now we're gonna put the valve back on, it's just a normal Schrader valve. Gonna hook it up to some air pressure to about 100 PSI. And once you pump it up, uh, get it all the way to the top and it'll atomize better if you go ahead and get it full of pressure. Then what we need to do is come over to the car and Bird, you ready to crank this thing up? Yeah. Now when you get this thing going, what you wanna do is fire up your car, get the AC running, get all the vents on high. That's gonna pull all that air in you know, blow it through the car, blow it through all the vents. There's two modes you can run in. You can go in fresh air, which pulls from the outside, these vents up in the front, or you can do recert mode. Now we're gonna do the fresh air mode, that way all that cleaner is gonna get pulled in through. Now make sure if you got rear vents, you got those kicked on high too. And you get your settings about 70 degrees, you know, about the middle, it doesn't have to be freezing cold. So let me get this thing fired up and running. Now this Nissan, if you look underneath, underneath the hood, these are where your air vents are. And I'm gonna go ahead and start spraying it in and it's gonna suck it inside and all these air vents, go ahead and clean it out. Now this first process, you wanna do this for about 30 seconds. That's gonna kinda of get the inside of the vent box and the inside of that cowl area clean and mold free. We'll do that and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, it's starting to smell kinda of nice already. Now what we're gonna do now is get through the recirculation area instead of from the vent. So we'll push recirculation. That will take, and we'll be sucking air from down here at the bottom. And I'm spraying it in. That's gonna clean that area. Now once we're done with this, we wanna go back in and replace the vent that goes to all the inside areas. Another thing you can do is kinda spray around in your cup holders and your floorboards and anything else that you wanna kinda spruce up, get rid of any mold and whatnot. And then all you have to do is lock this down. It's got a little locking tab. Lock it. Sit it down in your floorboard, point the FAQ from run right at your vent, and let it sit for four or five minutes, and then it's all gonna be ready to go. So, four to five minutes, and you're done. I take my car in for service every 3,000 miles. Isn't that good enough? We'll find out after the break. I take my car in for service every 3,000 miles. Isn't that good enough? Frequent oil changes are the best maintenance for your engine, and using ZMAX can help lubricate even further. 
That's because ZMAX uses the oil as a carrying agent and penetrates deeper into the metals of your engine. This will help your oil work better and extend your engine's life. This tip is brought to you by ZMAX. Performance you can feel. All right, welcome to the break room. We show you all our cool parts. Yeah, I got the trickest of trick fasteners. Now these are valve cover fasteners from Stage 8 Locking Fasteners. Now they're pretty awesome because not only do they look nice, but they function superb. You know, it's a locking fastener. And a lot of times on a, on a valve cover, you don't want to just squash that gasket down. But you know, if you don't get the bolt down tight enough, it can start to work its way loose. So you can get just the right clamp load, but have a locking feature. So these guys have a little, you know, aluminum locking feature tab, slides right on there, and that'll butt right up against the valve cover. Then you just put your little spring steel clip on there and that dude ain't going nowhere. Yeah, it's a good mechanical lock. Now these are gonna stay home. They've got rolled threads. They're made in USA. These come specific for your kit, so they come with everything that you need, say for a valve cover. And uh, you know, it's an aircraft quality, grade eight bolt. You know, that guy's not going anywhere. It's gonna keep all your stuff locked in yep. place. Duplex nickel plated, so it look nice and shiny. So yeah. this is from Stage 8 Fasteners. Check out their website. They have a lot of cool applications for your vehicle. All right, next one up. Let's say you got a 2003 to 2005 Navigator or Expedition, and you know you go out to your car and feel a little saggy. One in your bags. sags like this in the morning, you've got an airbag that went out. And so anytime you get one of those out, you need to just uh, go ahead and call Strut Masters or look on their website and get one of these uh, Strut replacement kits. Yeah, to replace your factory airbags, which are really, really expensive, you'll end up spending less than 25%, probably what you end up spending at the dealer for one of these systems. Yeah, and they have a lot of applications, you know, the Cadillacs, the Lincolns, a lot of cars have airbags. No real decision, just call Strut Masters, look them up online, yeah. and go ahead and replace it. Guaranteed for life. So as yeah. long as you own that thing, the sky will be right there for you. All right, next thing we got up is from Woodward Fab. This is their pipe and tube bender. This thing will do up to two inches, either round or square tubing. Yeah, and think of how many projects you could do with a tube bender. I mean, <laughs> just about anything you could think of, from a brush guard on your truck to a go-kart for your kid, you know, roll cage for your race car. I mean, yeah, it's you got name a, it. It's got a ratcheting design, which has been around for a long time. It's got a scale on there, so you can read the degree of bend, so you can repeat bends if you need to. Yeah, it's, can, it's got a stand, so you can just bolt it into your floor if you want. Yeah, it turns your shop from, uh, you know, a minimalist or, you know, what you can bend with your arms to now you got that leverage to go out there and make something nice and precise. That's right. Make the go-kart for the kids. Yep. So that's a Woodward Fab tube and pipe bender. Cool. I think that's it today, Bird. All right, let's roll it. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speedtv.com or visit twoguysgarage.com. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. Add new style to your truck or SUV with Eurostyle lights. The clear lenses don't diffuse the light, offering a brighter shine for a greater distance than the original. The Euro light uses an ultra clear lens with uniquely styled red reflectors that use the original clear bulbs. The light assembly complies with all federal regulations. Be sure to add a heavy duty headlight harness to ensure maximum light output. The harness draws power directly from your battery as opposed to through your headlight switch. The installation is easy. No splicing or cutting is required. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. With over 30,000 truck parts in stock, you can get the right part at the right price right now. Hey, careful with that precision tool there, easy, buddy. Easy, easy. All right, welcome back. Now, we've got on our headlights, and these things, just like if, you know, your sunglasses are really dirty, you can't see a thing, what we're gonna do is just clean these babies up. Now, this Permatex Headlight Lens Restoration Kit is cool. First thing you do is start with some 1,000 grit, kind of sand off, you know, to 1,000, then you come back with the 1,500, work your way all the way up to 2,500. Once you've got it sanded 2,500 real nice, so then you just take the polishing cloth they provide, put a little bit of plastic polish on there, polish out your 2,500 grit scratches, give it a nice kind of finished coat, and voila, you got this nice new headlight. And you can see on the one we did for demonstration, look at the difference. You can imagine what that'll really do for people seeing you coming, you seeing other people, seeing deer. Your car is gonna look better and it's just gonna really fix up your piece and uh, make an old car look new. 
So that uh, Perpentex headlight restoration kit really does a cool job. Yeah, it does. Now I got a little experiment over here. I got these grip tight super sockets and uh, super wrenches. And I got a standard wrench here, 11 sixteenths. And I kind of went ahead and rounded off this nut a bit. You're not supposed to do that, are you? Well, no, but sometimes <laughs> they come in like that, you know? So anyway, I can't get, you know, even a bit of grab on this guy. But, mm. you know, if I grab their super wrench, you can see their little cam locking technology. You know, as soon as I start to turn this guy one way or the other, these little cams bite right down on those flat spots. It's a piece of cake. I can get a ton of leverage. It's like those finger handcuffs you used to have in high school around the bus. That's right. It's the Chinese finger cuffs put right in here to a wrench. Now what's neat too is they got the socket version. And what's cool, you can just drop the bolt in there. Mm -hmm. And that guy's stuck, ready to kind of thread up into any kind of tight space you want. Oh yeah, that's a lot nicer than you pulling out a vice grip. You know what I mean? Your customers show that, hey, get that bolt off for you. Yeah, that's you know, right. and just strip it. This looks way more pro than that. Oh yeah, I'm thinking of all the ideas I can use to get this out of a jam, you know? That's a cool tool. Well, we're about out of time, so I hope you learned something about, you know, how to fix up your car, how to uh, test your brake fluid, how to bleed your brakes. Yeah, how to get some of those funky smells out of your car, maybe some of that mold up from under the dash. How to graffiti your wall, you know? All uh, handy tools to have around the shop. Yeah, so we're out of time. We'll see you guys next time. See ya.